Welcome to Virtual Lab. Today we will perform rebound hammer test. This is a non-destructive test performed to assess the properties of hardened concrete. This test is performed as per IS 516, Part 5, Section 4. This test can be performed for two purposes. First, to assess the uniformity of casting of concrete and second, to determine the likely compressive strength of concrete. To determine the likely compressive strength of concrete, a correlation between rebound index and compressive strength should be established. This can be done by measuring both the rebound index and compressive strength simultaneously on project-specific concrete cubes. Note that the correlation chart provided by the manufacturer can't be used to assess the compressive strength of the concrete. And now let us see. How do we establish the correlation? For this, the apparatus required includes rebound hammer, abrasive stone, CTM, and cube specimen. The specimen should be a cube of 150 mm side length. It is necessary to test at least three cube specimens for three different grades of concrete to establish the correlation. Procedure Step 1 Sample preparation. The cube specimens must be wet cured for 27 days and later kept in laboratory atmosphere for around 24 hours before testing. Clean the surface to be tested by rubbing with an abrasive stone. We will only test the vertical face of the specimen. Step 2. Marking. Draw lines along the two diagonals of the specimen. Mark at least 9 points of impact as shown in the adjoining figure, ensuring that neither two points are nearer to each other by 25 mm, nor any point is closer to any edge by 25 mm. Step 3. Readings. Hold the cube specimens in a CTM under a fixed load of 7 MPa, such that the surface containing 9 points is vertical. Now holding the hammer normally to the surface of the specimen, press the hammer against the surface until it rebounds. Immediately press the adjoining button on it to lock the reading. Remember not to impact the same point more than once and the hammer must be held normal to the surface being impacted. Note down the readings for all the nine points of impact for this specimen. Next, measure the compressive strength of the cube by loading it in a CTM and record the load applied when the cube fails. Divide the opt-in load reading by the loading area to get compressive strength. Repeat the same procedure to record the rebound and compressive strength values of the remaining 8 cube specimens. Tabulate the recorded data as shown. Calculate the average compressive strength and average rebound index for each concrete grade. Next, plot the three obtained points on a graph and best fit a linear line. This is your prepared correlation chart and is valid only for the rebound values within the range of the rebound index obtained from the test. Now we will move to the test procedure to be followed at a project site. For this, we will only need a rebound hammer and an abrasive stone. This test can be broadly done by following the three basic steps. First, selection of a suitable surface and marking. Second, taking measurements. Third, calculating compressive strength from the prepared correlation chart. The surface to be tested must be smooth, clean and dry. Any loosely adhering scale, paint, plaster, etc. must be grind off by an abrasive stone to expose concrete surface. Rough surfaces arising from improper compaction, loss of grout, spall or tool surfaces should be rejected. Find a suitable location at least 25 mm away from any nearby edge and thoroughly clean the surface with the help of an abrasive stone. In the next step, we will mark at least six impact points around each observation point. Here it is important to note that the rebound hammer test shall be conducted around all the observation points on all accessible faces of the structural element. 
Now, following the same procedure as stated earlier, rebound values are obtained and recorded into the data sheet. Here it should be noted that if the situation demands, the rebound hammer can be held at intermediate angles also, not necessarily normal to the surface, but in each case, the rebound number will be different for the same concrete. Finally, let us move to the calculation of compressive strength. First, remove all the outlier values found as per IS, ISO 16269, part 4, if found any. Next, calculate the average of the rest of the readings to get the average rebound index. Now, extract the compressive strength value corresponding to the average rebound index from the established correlation chart. Here we got 39.8 MPa as our strength value corresponding to the rebound index 40.8. Finally, let us see how to report the results. The test report shall include the following details as stated in the IS code.